One trusts you have met Shen He. So, are you getting along quite well? So far, so good. Yeah. So, you know Shen He too, Cloud Retainer? Naturally. Save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor. All the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen He to some degree. Adeptus name anyway. Calling her Shenhua feels kind of friendly, but also kind of disrespectful. So Paimon's thinking maybe it'd be better if we called her by her Adeptus name instead. Her Adeptus name? Why pray tell would Shenhua have an Adeptus name? Uh, don't all Adepti have a special title they go by? On this latter point, you are correct. However, Shen He is human. Oh, oh, right. Wait, what? What? You knew already? So is Paimon the only one who didn't know? Do you mean to say that she presents differently from ordinary human beings? Ah, oh, yes. She was like this all those years ago when one first met her. In this respect, she has not changed. One first found Shanha by chance in a cave. One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. Being of an ever-vigilant disposition, one entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shen He, then aged around six years old. In her hand, she held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains incarnate. That sounds so dangerous. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally, and are highly reliant on their parents for survival, but not so her. That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. One dealt with the monster, yet she still refused to lower her guard. She even pointed her dagger in one's direction, and remained ready to strike. Only after she was satisfied that one had no intention to cause her harm, did she finally relent. She then passed out without uttering a single word. In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shenhua might have... Not necessarily. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the god's wrath was gradually receding. Even had the stalemate continued, one suspects that Shen He may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. That's still so dangerous, though! Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Alas, the mortal world is rife with suffering of every kind. And she had experienced her fair share of this, even at a tender age. Seeing that she was homeless, one decided to adopt her. Indeed, it is one to whom she refers. Xian He has an extraordinary constitution, making her well adapted to practicing the Adepti arts. All the Adepti cherished her talents, and so we were willing to train her. However, her homicidal urges did not subside with age. Rather, they grew stronger day by day. Mooncarver once performed a divination for her. 
He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of Calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy, she is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses, that her soul must be bound with red ropes to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. The red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also seem to have rendered her... somewhat inexpressive. Perhaps the red ropes are so powerful that they have suppressed some of her other emotions as well. It is only by fate that people's paths may cross. Now that Shen He's path has crossed with yours, please be sure to treasure the gift that fate has given you, and take good care of her. Oh, now Paimon gets it. You came out here to check up on Shen He because you were worried about her, didn't you? Huh. You dare draw such a facile conclusion on the nature of one's present excursion? Incorrect. The truth is that while Liyue Harbor may seem peaceful today, danger is always lurking in the shadows. Ningguang once made a bold assertion that this is to be the era of the contract between Liyue and the humans. Well... One is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. One has occupied enough of your time, and night is approaching. Be sure to get ample rest. So, Shen He isn't an Adeptus after all. She just grew up around the Adepti. Oh, no wonder she doesn't like being treated as an Adeptus. Having everyone falling over themselves to show their respect all the time must be kind of hard to deal with. Master has relayed my situation to you, I take it. Oh? How did you know? I'd intended to wait until you came back before going to sleep, but I didn't hear you come in. I was worried that something may have happened to you, so I went outside to check and caught sight of my master. On top of this, you have been acting very strangely around me this morning, causing me to suspect that my master must have told you everything about me. After all, Master is... very talkative. <laughs> Sorry, Shenhua. Paimon had you down as an Adeptus this whole time, but it turns out Paimon was wrong. It's okay. I don't mind. The fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner, because in my experience, trying to explain is a futile pursuit. Still... Though you mistook me for an Adeptus, you never treated me as distant and unapproachable. Instead, you treated me as you would a friend. For this, I am very grateful indeed. To be fair, we've met our fair share of real Adepti, too. Anyway, now it's settled. 
From now on, you're our friend! Whether you're an adeptus or a human isn't the important thing. First and foremost, we're just plain old friends! Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do, I must say I like the title, Friend, very much indeed. Great! Well, now that we're all rested up, we should start searching for the other two items on the list. But before we do that, let's go to the building site and ask Ningwang's little helper how the progress is going. After all, Sunset Vermilionite is so rare. Paimon doubts many competitors will really be able to find any. If it turns out some of them have given up already, we'll be able to take things a little more slowly. Oh, and another thing. We bought some grilled chicken drumsticks on the way back last night. There was a place just outside. Here's one for you, Shenhua. Try it! They're so good. I concur. It has a rich flavor, far more agreeable than those I've cooked for myself in the wilderness in the past. I take my meals cold to quiet the spirit and calm my vital energies. Qingxin infused water. With ice is the most effective.
Expected, but welcome.
terrain outlines your fate. to act. Time to act. Play. Huh? 
Exorcism uses thaumaturgy and martial arts to conquer evil. There are other means to the same end, but they are not the true way. of evil remains. No, my soul! 
sword! Praise the value on this. Treasure hunting, a valiant endeavor. Get a sweat! No excuse for sacking! <laughs> it isn't time for a break yet! Don't be 
a killjoy! We've only just begun! <clears throat> I see through you! No slacking off! Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Forth, my play! Let me weave you a verse! your fate. find long-lost ancient literature.
objects like this may prove useful when purging evil spirits. One with my blade. Unexpected, but welcome. Leave it all to me.
my plan. No, my sword. Assistance. 